I don't know about y'all, but I've been in, in, the, in this walk several times that I said, God, I, I just don't sense, I just don't feel, I just don't acknowledge that, Father, this is what I need to be doing. I don't, I don't want to do nothing without you, but, Lord, it, it seems to be a little dry here. Is anybody, can I speak to anybody today? Come on. It seems to be a little dry. It seems to be uh, not, not going the way I think it should go. There we go, right? It, it's not happening the way that it used to happen. So, so Father, I, I think that you must be done with me on this behalf. And, and, and the enemy runs right behind that and thought goes, Oh, yeah, he's already done. He's, it, you're already been replaced. There's, there's nothing else for you there. You might as well just try something different, or you, you might as well look somewhere else. Hello. You, you might want to look at something else, but, you know, and then can I tell you today that God is not done with us yet. I don't care what the enemy says. I don't care what my friends say. I don't care what anybody else says. I listen to what God is saying. If God is not telling you that he needs you to open this other door, don't open the other door. If he's not telling you to move to the other side of the mountain, stay where you are and just know, be still and know that he is God. You see, we want to hurry things along. We want, to, we want to make things happen in our time. But can I tell you, God can do more in a second than we can in a lifetime. If we just listen to what he's trying to tell us. Sometimes we, we want to go, go, go. And, and that's in our human nature to want to see a results. Can I tell you today that whenever people started lifting weights... These bodybuilders, when they were lifting weights, they were probably not as big as they are now. It didn't happen overnight. Hello. Now, I know that they offer these uh, prescriptions over the TV that says, Hey, you know, uh, you can grow hair back. And then I say, Well, I might get hair, but what else is it going to take away? Because I can tell you right now, when man tries to do something, it's usually a mess. There's usually something wrong along the way. Hello? But can I tell you, when God does it, it's natural. It, it's truly divinely natural. And we think of it as a divine miracle, but when it's just something natural that God does. We get amazed when God heals us. From a headache. We go, oh wow. That was, woo. Or we get amazed whenever God blesses us with something. We've been praying for God. I've been praying, oh God, bless. bless. And then you get and go, oh, that's amazing. No, it's natural. Whatever God does is natural. It's not amazing. It's not magnificent. It's natural. It's natural. Because that's what God does. Everything in his word is true. He's never lied to us, and he never will. It's natural. But it's also natural for us to doubt when the time is at hand. Now, we're all in here this morning, and we're all, we're all hyped up because we know, hey, <laughs> there's a God that loves me, and he's going to take care of me. He's going to provide for me. He's going to watch over me. He's going to allow me to catch all them fish until I go fishing with G. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, we had him scared the other week. G was shaking the other week. He was like, oh, man, he ain't caught nothing. You imagine that? And he was like, he was throwing everything but the tackle box at him. I mean, he even took pieces of bread and threw it out there, tried to entice them along the way. You know, like, hey, you know, let me just see you, please. I, I know you're in here. We had a great time, though, when we went fishing, guys. We really did. And G wound up catching one, and then he had to do his little victory dance. I'm like, well, not going home empty-handed, so that's all good. 
But there comes a time when we doubt what's going on around us. It's great when we're around each other, but Lord, let us get alone. Let us get into a place of privacy or a place that where we know that the enemy is running rapid even the most. And let something happen, and then we go, oh God, why? Why is this happening to me? You must be done with me, Lord. I, I, I ran the race. I fought the good fight. You, you already done picked out your barrel plot. You're like, God, you're done with me now. No. God has not spoken to you and says, hey, I need you to go do something else. Hey, I need you to pay attention to something else. No. Wait for God to be God and let it come normal as God does. He will speak to you in the midst of all your storms. You just have to learn to listen. You have to learn to be still and know that he is God. Last week, God brought a good word to us in Psalm 68. There, Anybody remember the scripture? Oh, y'all really paid attention to me last week, didn't you? Whew. Psalm 68.1. Let God arise and the enemies be scattered. How many times did we speak that out this week? I can't count the times I had to. Hello? Because you know the enemy's going to run rampant against you every time that God does something great in your life. The enemy wants to come along like a spoiled child and say, hey, that's my toy and I want it back. I want to play with it now. I want to take it from you. That's when we can look at the enemy and say, hey, there's no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I need you to leave the house. I need you to leave the state. I need you to leave me alone. Why? Because Because God gave it to me and you can't have it. You're not done with me yet. If you have your Bibles, turn with me over to John chapter 11. God just keeps reminding me to remind us that he's not done with with us yet I've preached this many different ways and God just opens doors up so many times how many of you know that you can read certain scriptures your whole life and they'll have a whole meaning of something else good Mm, God is so good chapter 11 start with verse 1 it says now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, a town of Mary and, his, and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary which would anointed the Lord with the ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, and whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, he said to his disciples, let us go unto Judea again. Father, we thank you for this word today. God, we thank you so much, Lord, that you just are here in the midst of us. And, Father, that you're uh, all over the place today, God. Lord, whether they're online or, Father, wherever they are, God, right now we know that you're in the midst of your people. So, Lord, right now. I pray that every ear and every heart become open, Lord. And, Father, that they not only hear, but, Father, they receive as well. And, God, I ask you once again to anoint these old clay lips As you continue to hide me behind that cross of Calvary. And I ask this in Jesus name. And amen. Amen. 
I want us to take a look at something other. You see, sometimes, you know, we, get, we go through some troubles and trials. We go through some sicknesses. There's some things that along the way that life happens and we have to go through them. And the enemy, the closer we get to the God, the enemy get, tries to drive a wedge even deeper because he wants you to say, well, God, if you love me that much, why am I getting sick? God, why am I going through this trial? Why am I being aggravated so much here? God, why can't I get the job that I really wanted? God, why can't I have the car that I really wanted to have? God, why can't I just go in here? Why can't I feel? Why can't I? Can I tell you that the enemy is the deceit of all lies? Can I tell you that God is not done with you? Has God come to you and says, hey, I'm done with you? No. God will come to you and he will probably say, hey, I got something I need you to do. But God is never done with us. He loves us that much that he's willing to say, I've never left you and I've never forsaken you. Behold, I am with you always. To the very end, I am with you. I love this story between Martha and Mary and and Lazarus and, and the people that are there. But I want us to draw our attention here to verse 4. And it says, And when Jesus heard that he said, This sickness is not unto death. Now I can just imagine that his disciples around him goes, Oh yeah, there's no way he's going to die. You're on the scene. You're, 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 the, you're the man. <laughs> I, we've witnessed you walk through a, a, a town and just reach out and make your hand just flow over people and they stood up from being crippled. We've watched you just speak as what somebody's arms just stretch back out unwithered. We watched you tell a guy that was lame that his friends dropped him down and you said, take up thy bed because you are made whole. No way this guy here is going to die. No way it's going to happen. Even Mary and Martha, they thought in their minds, look, there's no way that he's going to die. There's nothing they're going to happen because you know why? Jesus is going to come. He's going to get here and everything's going to be fine. But along the way, Lazarus died. But Jesus spoke a prophetic word right there. and said, this sickness is not unto death. That's just like when he told the disciples whenever they got on the boat. He said, let us Go to the other side. And whenever they started along the way, Jesus takes a nap. And then all the things start going wrong. And they look down there and they said, don't he even care? Don't you even care about me, Lord? You see the, you see the troubles that we're going through. You, you see my child is sick. You know, my husband is sick. My wife is sick. My, my family is sick. That I'm just going through so much, God. Don't you even care. I've seen you do many things. I, you've healed this body, God. I know that. But yet, where are you? Where are you? Can we remind ourselves once again? There is a God that loves us. To Him be the glory. You see, what we want is an instantaneous results. We want to see something happen now. We want to see souls being saved right now. But can I tell you, when we just have faith in God to know that no matter what comes or goes, I don't have to see somebody give their heart to the Lord. I'm going to believe they're going to do it. Hello? Why? Because if I put them under the blood of Christ, they can't run out from underneath it. Hello? I even said this before. All of my children, all of my grandchildren will be saved. Hello? Because you know why? I'm putting them under the blood of Christ. And they cannot get out from underneath it. They may splatter around. They may toss to and fro. But guess what? God is still good. And he's on the throne. And he's not done with them. 
I love what he says here in verse 4. Sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, the Son of God might be glorified thereby. In other words, Jesus already had it planned out. He already knew what needed to take place. Sometimes we go through these things because we need to build our faith in God. Sometimes we, we need to really have that hard look of, like, God, do I really trust you? Do I really trust you? Can I tell you, <laughs> you really want to trust God, start tithing. Hello. Because the first thing's going to happen, I, you're going to pay that tithe, and then all of a sudden, things are going to start breaking down. And then you're going to go, well, if I hadn't gave that money, I sure could have got this fixed. If I hadn't have done that, I'd have had the money to have that fixed. Sometimes it's, it's kind of funny, but it's not. <laughs> that what it would cost to fix something was what you tithe. I'm like, are you kidding me? I remember a time I wasn't so delightful. Let's just put it that way. I remember uh, getting back into with the Lord and the church I grew up in, it was more of a, like, it's a convenient thing to give versus a biblical thing to give. It was more like, okay, you give what you think you should give or when you have it to give. Hey, I've even seen people make change in the offering plate. Hello. <laughs> True. I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> that's how that works. <laughs> but I remember... Me and my wife, we, we got back into church, and, man, we were, I, we were full force of everything. And there were still things that God was working on me, and God's still working on me. Hello. <laughs> he said, I ain't done with me, right? And so I started to work for Energy Electric, and um, I needed this tool in order to do this job. And uh, I had to buy tools along the way because we were, broke was an understatement. <laughs> I mean, if you look at broke and pitiful, you see my picture in the dictionary. I'm just saying, you know, it was there. And so I get in there and I'm like, okay, I, I need this tool. So I, I told my wife, I said, I got to go get this tool. And she goes, well, ain't going to happen this week. I'm like, well, why not? She said, well, she went through all the stuff and all, and then that last thing she said, she tithed. I'm like, what? You, how much? <laughs> and so she told me, I was like, oh, my God. I said, now I can't you do the job. I can't do this. I can't do that. I mean, I just went on a tyrant of a rant. You know, I'm not proud of it by no means, but I did it. And I remember I had the biggest hissy fit you ever wanted to have. I'm surprised she didn't kick me out, shut the door, and go, when you get done, you can come back in. But thank God she loved me enough to tolerate it, you know. 30 years worth of it. Yeah. Whew. Lord, you got something good for her, I know. But, you know, and I said, I remember I, I was so mad, I went and laid down, and God dealt with me so mightily and I remember I laid there and I cried and I said God I'm so sorry I was more sorry that I didn't trust God than I had a hissy fit with my wife and, and so I, I went back and I had to apologize to my wife and everything and I was like you know something's got to change and it has to start with me and I said, and so me and my wife, we took our checkbook out. We laid it on the table, and we prayed over it. And I said, God, this is your money. It's not mine. You will make provision where it needs to happen. You will make a way when there's no way. And so, God, I trust you. And do you know from this day forward, I still trust him. I still trust him. Everything I own belongs to him. 
And I even took that a step further. Even my children belong to him. I thank God that he allowed me to raise them for him. Trusting God. He's not done with us. The enemy might say he's left you, he's forsaken you, he's, he's kicked you to the curb. This is about to take place. Can I, can I tell you that God is not done with us yet? There's still more that he wants to do and that he needs to do, but yet he needs to get the glory for it. It's not about me, it's not about you, it's about him. Even in the upcoming Thursday night with the, with, with the ordination service, it's not about my son. It's about what God is doing through my son. To God be the glory in all things, in my home, in my life, in my work, everything about it. It's glory to God for him upon high. And he knew that. And, and Jesus said unto his disciples, yes, but it's not going to be unto death. Turn with me over to, stay in John chapter 11. Let's go to verse 11 as well. John 11, 11. And he says this, These things said he, and after that he had said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of the sleep. Then he said his disciples, Lord, if he is asleep, he shall do well. And how be it Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of a rest and sleep. And then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Could you imagine the look on their face whenever Jesus turned to them and said, Lazarus is dead? They probably said, What? There's no, you said he's asleep. You didn't say nothing about him dying. We should have done when. We should have done when there. We should have, well, let, we need to travel all night. We need to go now. That We need to get there. And Jesus says, hold on. Be still and know that he is God. Be still for just a moment. Get out of that panic mode. Get out of the hurry mode. Get out of the hustle mode. Stand still. Take a breath and say, God, you are so good. And God, I know you're not done with me yet. I know that there's a trial set before me. But God, I'm going to be still and know that you are God. And no matter what, you're going to get the glory out of all of this. You're going to get the glory. And so they, they travel along the way, and, and then all of a sudden, here it is. The disciples had no idea of this. But Mary and Martha had all of their friends from around town. They, they, they come around to mourn Lazarus. They all were right there trying to comfort the family. They, there was a crowd of people. It wasn't just Mary and Martha. You see, in that community, you lived as a community. Everybody come together. Jesus knew exactly what was going to take place. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I can just see it now, as him walking towards that city, people started recognizing, hey, here comes Jesus. Here he comes. Here he comes. And then they probably were saying also, man, you're a little late. Because you see, at that time in Scripture, when they laid you in the tomb for three days, they thought that your soul was just hovering around waiting to come back into it. The fourth day is whenever it actually left. Hmm. Read up on it. It's true. That's what the Jews thought. And all of a sudden, Jesus shows up on the fourth day. And Mary and Martha, they're like, it's too late. It's done. It's over. 
He's, in the t- he's been there four days. If you'd have been here a day earlier, it's, it, we might could have done something. How many times have we looked at God and go, God, I think we missed it. I think we missed it. I think we missed the miracle. I think we missed the healing. I think we missed the deliverance. I think we missed the calling. Hello. But can I tell you, God is never late. He's always right on time. He's an on-time God with an on-time mission. Hallelujah. And Jesus walks up to the tomb. And he's sad because his brother had died. He, the word says, and Jesus wept. He wasn't sad that he was going to stay there. He had an emotional connection with Lazarus, just like he has an emotional connection with you. That's why he says that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and me. He has that divine connection with you, a personal connection with you. Ain't that amazing that we have a God that loves it, that wants to have a personal connection. And he walked up to the tomb, and and they looked at him and said, you're late. It's it's too far gone. And Jesus says, you all ain't seen nothing yet. I love it when God shows up on the scene and he has that divine plan and we're standing there with our drawers dropped down, tears flowing up, and we're all like scattered running like chickens through a chicken yard with a hawk circling over you. Mm -hmm. And yet we wonder why it takes God a moment to catch up to us. Because he's chasing you down, trying to be with you, and you're running from him. And don't take my word for it. Look over here in the scriptures. In verse 40, Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. If we believe the way we say we believe, should we not expect to see the glory of God? Should we not expect to see things take place? It's not something that phenomenal that we look at and go, oh, that's tremendous. No, we look at it and say, well, that's normal for God to do. Because God can do all things. And he looked at over and he says, my brother shall rise Again. And in their mind they go, well, yeah, I know you said that, you know, he, that we're all going to have his resurrection thing. It's going to happen sometime. And, and I can, I'm sure God gets very aggravated with me some days. Because sometimes I'm like, huh? Really? You're going to do what? <laughs> okay. Can I tell you this day that the next day when I went to work, I didn't have the tool with me. But there was someone who came up to me and says, hey, I got an extra one of these. You need one? And I said, oh, yeah. You better believe I need that. God provides. Just as he provided a sacrifice for Abraham that day with Isaac, he's a provider. He provided a solution for that problem that day that they thought there was no hope at all. The enemy wants to get us to a place where we think there's no hope. There's nothing left to do. We might as well just throw dirt over it, go on about it, and let it be. Can I tell you that God looked, <laughs> gee, he looked right there at him. He says, and Lazarus shall rise again. Hallelujah. And he looked down at me and he says, and take that stone away. And they said, he's been there four days. He's starting to stink. He's starting to smell pretty good. I, I don't, they probably did rock, paper, scissors. Who was going to roll the stone back? They were like, oh, you lost it. It's on you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. But they rolled it back. 
And Jesus stood there with a loud, crisp voice. Mm. That voice that says, Lazarus, come forth. Come forth. And the word says that all of a sudden, something started to ease out of that tomb. To God be the glory. Can I tell you today, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. I don't know what y'all are going through. I don't know what you're dealing with, but can I tell you, he's sitting there right now going, Hey, I need you to come out. I need you to come out of that tomb. Can I tell you, that tomb is not designed for you. Death has no victory over you. There's nothing there. I've already conquered. It's already done. I'm telling you right now, you need to step out of your dilemma and know, hey, hey, I'm a God that can know, can do all things. He is a God that still loves us, that's willing to sacrifice everything about himself that we may endure. We may endure. Isn't that awesome that we have a God that loves us that much? He's speaking to you right now saying, hey, come on. Come on. Yeah. And then when you get to that certain point, out of your dilemma, mm, oh, hallelujah. He says, loose them and let them go. Can I tell you, he looks at the enemy. When you start keeping out of that dilemma that you're in there holding you back, and he says, hey, loose them and let them go. Because why? You have no power, no authority. I'm speaking to you right now. Be gone. Somebody should get excited over that besides me. Somebody needs to recognize that you don't have to be stuck in that dilemma. You're not called to be in that circumstance. God is not done with you yet. He has more for you to do. We look at things a whole lot different than what God does. Sometimes all we see is doom and gloom, and God sees an opportunity to show up and show out. I guess the question of the day is this. Do you feel, do you think, have you acknowledged that God is done with you? Is he done with your marriage? Is he done with your healing? Is he done with your deliverances? Is he done with your children? Is he done with your enemies? Can I tell you that God is not done with any of those things. He's just getting started. Why? Because he said, greater things shall you see and do. I'm still waiting for those things to take place. But I can't do it if I'm still stuck in my dilemma. If I'm still bound with the grave clothes of selfishness. If I'm still bound with those grave clothes of deceit, of fear, and agony. I need to be loosed and let go. Stand with me this morning.